Well guys, Danny back from Deep South Homestead. Today has been cleanup day. We uh, pushed the Danny corn as far as we could because there was a few little ears on it that we thought maybe might have some seeds in it that we could save and we found out there was about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 little ears. Uh, Ms. Allison gave us some corn dryers, so we went ahead and uh, we went ahead and pulled the ears off, stuck them on the corn dryers. We're going to be hanging them up, letting them dry, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, save a few seeds from them to go back into our seed stash. Now, it's not the best seeds in the world, but sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, and hopefully these will have a little bit of drought resistance bred into them. But you saw us with the uh, uh, small Kubota with the grapple on the front and a bush hog. We bush hogged it all down. We took the grapple, took it over to the cows, got uh, fed the cows, and then I put some in the compost pile to be breaking down. And I know a lot of you is going to say, well, man, you should have left that in the ground for uh, organic matter. If I'd have done that and took this tiller and put it in here, that stuff would have wrapped all up around the tiller and everything, and I wouldn't have been able to have done nothing. Like it was, they still pieces of it. You can see it. There's still matter in the ground here. I got the long, big stuff up out of here, and I tilled up all the little stuff. Now, when I go to plow this and make my rows up, this stuff like this is going to give me fits, but I'm going to try to work with it, let it just break down back into the soil as much as I can. The plans is, guys, with the rest of the year looking like it's going to look, they're talking about my sources are saying that possibly till October, the heat's going to be intense, uh, maybe dry, worse than what it is. So we're investing in some seeds that is made to grow in an arid climate where it's just dry and hot and everything and 100 and something degree temperature all the time from Native American tribes that have been very successful with it. So we're going to try to maybe plant a couple of rows of some blue Hopi corn and grow it kind of like they do just to see what kind of results we get. We're not going to use all of our seed this year, but we're going to try to see if we can get something out of it before cold weather gets in here and destroys everything. We're just going to try it. We have nothing to lose. But guys, right now, we're praying... <laughs> Praying to the Father above, we have a big cloud system right in here. We're hoping that it's moving this away. We hear it thundering way in a distance, but this is nothing new for us. We go through this every day. It just never gets here. Uh, we might get a little three-minute shower, and then the hot sun pops back out and sucks it right back up. It really benefits us not at all. Uh, no water in the pond. The pond's still way down. So we're praying that maybe this afternoon this cloud will get here and not rain out. Most of them rain out before they get here. And it's very disappointing when you see everybody around you getting rain and you get nothing. Uh, so pray for us, guys. That the Lord will be good to us and we'll get some rain. Enough not to be a gully washer but just enough to water the ground good where we can get this corn in here because I don't mind tilling it again. If I got to till it again, I'll do it again. But it's just, we just want to get another crop in here and we want it to be able to make. That's our, that's our goal. We just want to be able to make some corn this year. And supposedly the Blue Hopi corn is one of the better corns for flour and cornmeal and stuff like that. The Danny corn, we don't have enough time for it. And the Blue Hopi, they're saying that we might could do it in this length of days that we got left. That's all I can say. We're going to give it a try, and if it works, we'll be happy. Thank you guys from Deep South.